Oh, I've the almost been on it too. Well, there's yeah. your experience. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I don't know. I think I make more money selling real estate. Huh. Probably. I certainly have more freedoms. I wouldn't. I definitely wouldn't have it. Huh? There's no competition to your line of work. There's a lot. Residential. It's okay. There's enough for me. See, I'm not one of those guys. <laughs> I just need enough for me and my family. I see. I see. You got the there. You need to get the rest of the time. I travel. Yeah, that goes. I live here in travel. I see what happens. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no children. People love my dog, so just get a dog sitter. Super easy. <laughs> Somewhat. I need to to follow your lead. No, don't do that. <laughs> I don't recommend that. Where do you travel? Where do you go to? <laughs> I mean, we just got back. From, we just got back from Denver. We were in Colorado oh, nice. this weekend, or this last week. We're booking a trip right now for Spain for Mandy's 41st nice. birthday. Nice. We're in Spain. Barcelona. Oh, best city in the world. Yeah, I think so too. Personally, yeah. Before COVID, pre-COVID, we were like starting to save money to buy a apartment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and yeah. Just kind of ran. Three months, I think. Is that right? Three months in Spain? For what? I think you can only oh, you can, oh, you can there. buy there immediately. Oh. The yeah. kicker is, is you got to have half in cash. Oh. So whatever the apartment is, you got to have over sure. half of it in, in hard capital. And Good for you. Good for you. So. You know, my husband and I traveled out. Oh, we lived in Corsica for a year. Really? I mean, we, we <laughs> I mean, we travel, but now, at this time in my life, I don't really have any desire to travel anymore. You know, it's funny. I just, I like it here, you know. But, but, oh, man, I have to carry my passport with me, just in case. You can buy anything. All you need is your passport. Oh, gosh, I love it. Is this being streamed? Just, oh, it is. Five seconds away, so we can just in case. <laughs> just in case, <laughs> just in case one of us curses. Okay, there you. There's your answer. Two, four, six, eight, exactly. Good. So, so thirty minutes. Yeah. It's rock and roll. <coughs> we got a minute and two minutes. A minute. We'll do the Jeopardy tune for you. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. And now my husband, I said to my husband, this is just one more thing meeting at 730. Just one more nail in the coffin. <laughs> okay. Let's call the meeting to order. All right. Here we go. So the staff recommends the agenda be amended as follows. Items D, new business, and E, old business, will be switched. And that, and that an item be added under new business regarding a special use meeting to be held on September 27, 2021, for the purpose of considering the special use permit application of Haley Hirsch Orion Retreat and Daycare Incorporated. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda as amended? So a motion to approve. Second. Okay, great. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Agenda is approved. Okay, Madam Chairman, Chairwoman, the next item on the agenda is public comment. <coughs> And everyone who wishes to speak should have signed in before the meeting. And I understand that you have 10 signatures there. Uh, so you also instructed us to limit public comment to 30 minutes in total. So everyone who signed up will be able to speak. All comments are limited to three minutes. Um, when the chairwoman calls your name in the sign-up sheet, please approach the podium and state your name and address for the record. Madam Chairman, first name. Oh, oh, we're doing it. I'm sorry. Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. Hazel Thornton. Hello, everybody. I want to comment on this plan. Get close to the microphone, please. Oh, sure. Yeah. There you go. Thank Maybe. you. Is that better? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Sounds the same to me, but. Um, so 
I think there are a lot of good ideas in here. And this isn't a q and A. I I realize that. But I would like to say that I hope for more specific language in the final one, that if this is an interim plan, such as the steep slope issue, I think we have to have exactly the same requirement as Buncombe County. I think that the, our lack of, of a steep slope ordinance is partly why we're being uh, surrounded by developers who are not um, careful. Mm -hmm. And uh, I noticed there, there aren't any ordinances in here. So I'm just a little ignorant about the process. Uh, I hope that we're going to uh, go through the ordinances. Um, I see heads nodding. You're agreeing with me or you're hearing me. I don't know. I don't really like this format at all. So uh, that is almost all. Oh, I hope that we are going to be able to do something about this zoning map because it is not working for us. There's too much high density, and the mountain village districts are by and large just inappropriate for where they're located, especially concerning the infrastructure, the road infrastructure, and protecting the French Broad River. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, Ellen Brown. <coughs> yes, good evening. My name is Ellen Brown. I live at 200 Jonestown Road. I'm not quite sure what I want to say tonight. I don't have any particulars on all of these indications I see on here or the wording that you'd like to modify here or there. What I do want to say, the bottom line, is that all of you and any other members of the council or whatever need to make a sincere effort to communicate to all of us in Woodfin and in the neighborhoods around what you care about, what you want to protect, what your goals are, what your values are, your commitment to good government, your unhappiness with things that get thrust on you and you, weren't, you didn't see it coming, and you're going to have to scurry around. If you do this right, you will not have that situation where, oh, my God, look, that developer has got, oh, and he's already passed, and it's already, and I don't know, we can't do anything about it because look what the law says. We have to get ahead of this whole procedure. And a few weeks ago, all of us were saying slow down. And what I see tonight looks like a little bit of band-aids here and there that we're going to fix this up and make it amenable and make it good and, and it'll be done and it'll be fine and we'll get it passed and oh goody goody. But no, I don't feel the confidence that that is really what's happening here. You guys are making a sincere effort. You are getting things in some kind of shape to begin a process, but most of us that live around here are nervous and worried and anxious that this should be done in a way that will be proud, that reflects the 21st century, that's not still stuck in, oh, we've got to bring businesses and prosperity to Woodfin. No, we've got to protect the environment. We've got to protect the housing stock and not have developers buy it all up and tear it all down and cut down all the trees. And you all know what the developers do. That's an evil that we have to be together on. Not all developers, perhaps, but as a rule, we have to have our wagon circled and our plan for how we're going to combat it. We have to know the rules. We have to be able to have opportunities to talk to our neighbors. 
whether it's going door to door just to say, hey, you want to hear what's going on? Let me tell you. Be brave. Do that. I've done a little bit of door to door, and it's a wonderful experience because I'm finding out people that live a few blocks from me that I never met and that I'd love to get to know. So my time's up, but please do, do your best for us. Thank you. Okay, Glenda Overbeck. <coughs> Glenda Overbeck, 8 Bearbridge Hills Drive, uh, and an alternate to this committee. Um, I'm just here to say I hope you will approve the amendments or additional words, whichever you choose to call it, that um, are going to be proposed tonight because it does move us closer to, uh, it, it isn't the, you know, final version of, you know, there's going to be a lot of need for a uh, community input to devise a plan that hopefully we will have an up updated plan in a year, year and a half as we hear it's going to take. But this, with this additional wording, we can begin the process of working better with our neighbors and with getting control of some of the developers who may not, you know, be as, scru as scrupulous as we'd like them to be. So anyhow, that's, I just want you to approve it, please. Okay, thank you. Okay, and Tracy de Blasio. Good evening, Tracy de Blasio. Um, I, don't, I don't have a lot to say either. Oh, Your address? oh Dirty Robin Lane, Asheville. Um, we know this isn't a good plan. It's a rehashed old plan. You know, it's not been a good process and it's a rush process. That's been the standard for Woodfin. And I think this sets hopefully will be the last time we rush through things. And as we go into the next step of really doing a robust, futuristic plan that we are more visionary and less reactionary. And the same will go when we go with the 160 160D amendments that we look at being transparent, at getting community input, and doing what the bare minimum is so then we can do what we really need to do like the steep slope ordinances the stormwater improvements and really look at that we should have things about climate change in this plan we should have things about affordable housing in this plan and a lot more to do um, again to think about sustainable smart growth for the future for the people that already live here and the people that we want to attract to come and develop and be a part of the community. That's it. Can I ask you a question? Is are you in Woodfin or is Asheville your mailing address? But you're in the town of Woodfin. No, I am. You're uh, in Asheville. I I'm in the county. In the county. I'm in the county, and I am adjacent to Woodfin. Okay, understand. Thank you. Just gotcha. wanted to make that clear. Yep. Okay. The only sub developments neither Woodfin or Asheville wants to annex. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you. Uh, Robert McGee. Hi, Robert McGee, uh, 5 Martell in Woodfin and 10 Kidstown in Asheville near Tracy in that development. And I just wanted to acknowledge, take a moment to acknowledge the firefighters and police and military people in the with the anniversary of September 11th and uh, I think about that because of what's missing from these amendments is the health and safety portion. I don't see language about the health and safety of surrounding neighbors and it's especially concerning because of the strain if the town of Woodfin is going to increase population. That should be a conditional use review. Um, if traffic is going to significantly increase 50% or more, conditional use review. So thank you for listening tonight. Thank you. Ben yeah. <laughs> <Jen> Saylor. <clears throat> Howdy folks, Ben Saylor for Union Street. Um, I'm here for a similar reason 
To everyone else, uh, I don't know much about the new plan. I've not read fully through it. I know that we've kind of gotten to this road because the last plan didn't quite cut it. Uh, the bluffs e exposed things in the plan that were, you know, gray area that we need to re define those things. And it's kind of led us to this point, right? We've got a contingency of the citizens, some who don't live here in Woodfin, some who do. A lot of, a lot more of Woodfin residents that I know are concerned about this than those who are here at the meeting tonight, because this thing is kind of drug on for a long time. We're on, you know, a year, year and a half of this whole situation unfolding. So um, I'd just like to weigh in that I feel like my property value, my investment in this town, everything's been put into jeopardy by this bluffs thing almost happening and almost happening because of loopholes and gray area and, and, and a door left cracked. And we, we've been, um, as, as the lady said before, we, we're kind of behind the curve of this thing. And we, we encourage you to listen to your citizens because we're here to weigh in. And, and we all want a great future for Woodfin. We all do, like whatever side of the aisle or whatever you're on, there's a legacy at stake here. And we're trying to define that in this new plan. Um, from what I understand, the new plan has been, has had some language removed, such as the health and safety thing we keep talking about. Uh, I don't know if the, uh, you know, new developments being in or out of character with the neighborhood or adversely affecting neighboring property values is, is in there. But what I think we need to have is language that protects the people who already live here. Um, it, we got to understand that five story buildings on the other side of the river is really going to leave a legacy for this town for better or for worse, a new bridge across the river. These are hugely important things that will outlast our lifetimes. And we need to make sure we make the right choice. I listened to the firefighter who had signed the letter saying, yeah, we can do this. We can fight a fire on these five-story buildings. By the end of it, by the time we got down to it, he said, I don't really feel good about the Texas donut. I'm not sure I can do that. That's not ideal. There's a concrete ring around this building. I'm not sure I can fight it. Going back to the firefighter health and safety thing, from our firefighters to our police, to you know, the people look, living on Green Oak Road who look across the river, to the people at the top of Reynolds Mountain who look down on the entire town. We need to make sure we leave a good legacy. We're gonna do that by listening to the people. I encourage you to have a long, lengthy, open, transparent, common period that's well announced on the sign out front, whatever you gotta do to let these citizens of this town weigh in on it so that we can uh, leave a good legacy for, for the people who come you know, after us. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Deborah Kelly. Good evening. I'm Deborah Kelly. I live at Three Skyland Court in Asheville. Again, I'm uh, very close to the um, annexed portion of Woodfin that has been, uh, been discussed this evening. And uh, I really don't have anything prepared to say other than just to thank you for recognizing the gem that Woodfin is. I see on your website that you are highlighting the beauty of your town, the beautiful picture of the river with the woods and the effort that's going into the Greenway now. And I do hope that this comprehensive plan and the ordinances to come will reflect the values of appreciating and conserving the beauty that is here now. As I said, Woodfin is a gem. You have so much beautiful unspoiled area left. And now is the opportunity to be able to conserve and preserve that as more green space for your residents. Um, I also appreciate the effort that has gone into what I read this evening, these amendments. Um, that is definitely going in a direction that makes me feel more comfortable. Um, and yet I, again, as Tracy <coughs> said, would really like to see that fleshed out more and um, and go further, particularly in protecting the health and safety of not only the residents of Woodfin, 
but your neighbors who will be affected by the actions of Woodfin. So I think that's it. I appreciate the opportunity to address you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Heather Hytella. Heather Hertola. From, oh, I'm sorry, Hertola. That's okay. You're not the first. Okay. Um, 26 Skyland Court in Asheville. Um, I would just like to thank you for all for being here and stress or restress or reshape some of the things that have been said before me. You're laying a foundation. You're laying a foundation, and the foundation is the most important part of everything that goes on afterwards. This foundation, as a lot of us have known in these environment and in the land and the steep slopes, a foundation that is not built properly will crack and slide. So the important thing is to really spend time, take the time and effort to think of all the factors that that foundation, that sit on top of that foundation, which is the environment, which is the wonderful town of Woodfin the residents of Woodfin and the surrounding areas and those people that are gonna be affected by it. There are so many factors that rest on whatever foundation you're using. And so I urge you to take the time with the wording, the explanations, the filling out so that the foundation that you leave as a legacy really supports the future. Okay. Thank you. Galen Wilcox. Hi, my name is Galen Wilcox. <clears throat> I live at 63 Hornot Circle in Asheville. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for your time and attention. Uh, this service that you're providing to the town of Woodfin is really, during this time, is really uh, inspirational. <clears throat> so I would like to recommend uh, for your consideration uh, at this time, making the comp plan, uh, addressing a frequent uh, citizen's complaint about these processes in general with developers and, uh, and zoning boards and citizens, which is the unimpeded and unreported access of developers to town decision makers in some cases for years uh, before the citizens who are going to be most impacted receive their two weeks notice, uh, which can, for instance, be during Christmas vacation, uh, during which they're supposed to put together a legal team, uh, hire experts, and defend against the developer. <clears throat> I even know of one developer who bragged about having an office in Woodfin Town Hall for years before the citizens uh, who were going to be impacted found out about it. So, uh, you have to ask the question, what does the developer need to have personal access for? What can he do uh, from down the hall here that he can't do from his home and office in Florida? The only answer I can come up with is to make friends and influence people. Uh, and that influencing of people, uh, that opportunity for that period of time in the hands of a great salesman uh, gives rise to the appearance of impropriety. Who knows what deals he's made with who if he has unimpeded access and unreported access for months and months. So my proposed solution is to put an ethics section, maybe just a couple of sentences, uh, in the comprehensive plan to provide a legal basis so a future planning boards that you know, come out of this want to take on that fundamental gross unfairness that's built in, uh, they can do so. Uh, thank you. Autumn Pittman. 
Last one. Last one. Hi, y'all. How you doing? Good. Hi, my name is Autumn Pittman, and I'm one of your neighbors over in the Richmond Hill community. I actually live on the same street as Tracy, uh, Robin Lane. And uh, Robin Lane is a unique little neighborhood. We're kind of in this sort of um, purgatory between Woodfin and Asheville. <laughs> We're just this little Buncombe County road. Um, but from my front porch, I can see Woodfin. <laughs> so your trees are there, but I am in the county. Um, but uh, I've come here today to ask the board to consider very carefully whether or not that this comprehensive plan is currently on the table truly exhibits the qualities of a town whose motto is where community matters. Um, the town of Woodfin has a unique opportunity to create a comprehensive plan that is in line with the challenges of our time, having to do with climate change and things like that, and the growth that the area is experiencing, and really create a vision for what Woodfin and the greater Asheville area can be. We keep talking about legacy, and I, I as having a child, and I, I moved here, and I've raised my son here, and I, I really believe that this is uh, an important thing to consider. Um, it's not just us, we're, we're growing older and we have our children and grandchildren to consider. Um, and with the very recent floodings happening in the county, I think that that was um, quite a, a, a wake up call in a lot of ways to see just how dramatic, um, you know, the, the, the change in our climate uh, can affect us instantly. Um, and so I hope that Whitfin will take into consideration um, these things moving forward and take the necessary steps to protect the community from undue stormwater runoff that comes from deforestation and overdevelopment. Um, I do want to say that uh, looking at the amendments, I appreciate the effort that is being made and obvious, um, obvious actions that you've, you're hearing us and hearing the community. That's really important in, in this process that we're doing right now. Um, I've never been so involved in anything. I just bought my home and all of a sudden I'm involved in, you know, community politics and things and it's pretty wild and eye-opening, but um, <laughs> it, I'm seeing how valuable it is. Um, but I hope that you will uh, take this opportunity um, to really consider the future of this area. I hope you will create a timeline to continue to encourage community participation in this process. Um, I like what Ben said, like, I don't know if there's a newsletter or something in the town of Woodfin and that you maybe send out quarterly to the community that can keep people up to date. Because you do have a lot of older folks. I've met a lot of people in this process that want to be more involved but don't really know how or don't always know what's going on. And so just finding out ways to really communicate. And the, the website updates are awesome. So that's really great. I appreciate that. Um, and I've lived here since 2003. I moved here after college to work in Buncombe County Schools. And I actually lived over on Valley Park Drive. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Go. Um, so I've watched the area grow as Asheville's popularity and tourism continues to grow as well. And with this comes the allure of outside money interest, uh, wanting to benefit from what the people here already know and know to be a sacred gift. I hope that Woodfin, a town where community matters, will remember who it is they serve. I hope that this board will think about your neighbors in Richmond Hill and just because a piece of land was annexed, it should not mean the health and safety of those neighbors is negated. Yesterday, my family took a drive to Marshall all the way down Rich, uh, Riverside Drive. And so I was able to see the potential of what's happening here. What I found interesting was one side of the road got parks and things, some, some um, industry and everything, but the other side of the river is all trees. There's no housing over there from the uh, Rich, uh, River Arts District all the way to Marshall. It's all trees, and I would like for it to stay that way, but I think it's, it's, it's suggest uh, there's a rationale there. Why are those trees still there on that side of the river? So anyways, um, thank you for hearing me. Appreciate it. <laughs> Before you say anything, there is a newsletter in Woodfin. Is there? Absolutely. The, okay. the mayor the mayor signs off on it and everything. He writes a, a little something about it. I don't know how often it comes out, but it's a regular thing. Is it only digital now? No, no, no. Uh, it's, it's, it goes on the mailbox. Most recently, it's only digital. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. This, this seems like newsworthy, something newsworthy for that newsletter. I don't know if there will be mention of that in newsletter. Okay. Uh, we're, we're not going to talk about that right now. Okay. No. 
Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, the next item of business is consideration of the town of Richmond 2021 comprehensive plan. As a reminder to the board and the public, the public hearing for this item was held on August the 23rd. Tonight was public comment on the hearings on the uh, the item before the board tonight is consideration of a recommendation to the board of commissioners. And at this time, the chairwoman has asked planning director Adrian Eisenhower to reintroduce this item. So I just wanted to take about five minutes to talk about what a comprehensive plan is and the decision in front of you tonight. So first, what is a comprehensive plan? It is a guide for discussions and decisions. It sets goals for present and future, social, physical, and economic development. It provides objectives for achieving goals, but it is not a bonding decision document. Um, chapter 160D-501 requires that municipalities adopt a comprehensive plan. Um, it requires that that process include citizen engagement opportunities. It lays out topics that could be included in the plan, like recreation, economic development, education, others. Um, but it also states that plans adopted under this chapter shall be advisory in nature without independent regulatory effect. So why are we here tonight talking about the comprehensive plan? Well, we're starting with the end in mind. So as I said, 160D requires that municipalities have a adopt and maintain a plan. The town of Woodfin's objective is and continues to be to have a thorough and inclusive process for development of that plan. We started talking about the options for developing a plan in July. Um, I've been working with a consultant since then. I'm actually meeting with that consultant at the end of this week to um, finalize that proposal that I'll be taking to the Board of Commissioners next week for approval. So as soon as we can get approval on that proposal, we'll, we'll begin working on the 2022 comprehensive plan. So the plan adoption options tonight, so we have the 2008 plan. It has served as a guiding document. It has been used in discussions and decisions re related to land use, but it hasn't been formally adopted. So we created the 2021 plan, and it is the 2008 plan, uh, without dated and redundant language remo removed, but the concepts are the same. Um, and the idea is that it will, it will, it will provide the bridge between um, now and the, and the deadline for the 2022 adoption of a comprehensive plan. So you tonight have two options. You can consider the 2021 plan, um, suggest amendments or modifications, and make a recommendation to the commissioners. Or you can recommend that we don't adopt a comprehensive plan until we get the new 2022 plan formed. <coughs> This is a timeline that I've been working on with the consultant for the new plan. And as you can see, we've been backed up a couple months, so we won't likely be getting started with that until October. And to do the thorough inclusive plan, we, we decided um, at this point, it wouldn't be until next August that we could get all the way through that plan. And that's if everything goes perfectly. Um, so if we can get the 2021 plan adopted, that will give us all the time we need to get the thorough um, comprehensive plan adopted for 2022. So staff recommends affirmation of the 2021 comprehensive plan and a recommendation to the Board of Commissioners for adoption. Um, as has been stated, we had the public hearing for this plan a couple weeks ago. Um, it's been available on our website for the public. All of you should have had the opportunity to review the plan. So um, we're asking your, for your feedback on the 25 goals and the 63 objectives and the 110 strategies that are included in the proposed plan what needs to be changed, added, or removed. So at this point, I will turn it back over to the board for discussion on the plan that's been presented. <clears throat> okay. Did everyone have a chance? <laughs> Did everyone have a chance to review the proposed comprehensive plan and appendices, including other adopted plans of the town? Yes. Is there a motion to, is there a motion regarding the comprehensive plan? Yes, I have one. Okay. Uh, Is there? Yeah, he can just read. Okay. And before I make the motion, I, I do appreciate the board delay in this because I was very uncomfortable moving forward until I had a chance to sit down and read it. And I consulted with some experts in areas like this and uh, 
read the Fletcher Comprehensive Plan, which really, uh, so I got a lot of input. And so I do have a motion. I move that the 2021 plan be modified to include the following changes. And there are several of them, and I'm going to read them verbatim so that we stay straight up the middle of the road, the narrow legal road. First, Add an additional bullet to Section A, Land Use, Goal 1, Section B. The additional bullet would read, initiate a townwide discussion as to whether Woodfin should encourage the development of a commercial and governmental hub that would give Woodfin, a, give Woodfin an identity point, an identity point, making certain to involve all residents and stakeholders. Number two, Modify Section A land use goal two in this way. It currently reads, quote, improve overall quality of both existing and new development. I propose adding the words with an emphasis on infrastructure, reality, and future needs, close quote. Third, modify Section A land use again, goal three in this way. It currently reads, quote, continue to effectively use annexation for growth management and tax base enhancement I propose adding this, as long as the property to be annexed, A, meets Woodfin environmental standards, including stormwater runoff, and B, meets the requirements of the Buncombe County Steep Slope Ordinance or Woodfins once adopted. Number four, modify Section A land use again, goal number five, objective in this way. It currently reads, quote, Promote effective and efficient intergovernmental inter coordination regarding key land use issue issues such as annexation agreements, enforcement of erosion control standards, development of a regional greenway system, and other issues. I propose striking the last two words, other issues, and replacing them with adoption of a steep slope <coughs> ordinance that is compatible with neighboring jurisdictions. Number five, modify section D entitled Ed education, goal number two. It currently reads, quote, reduce the number of students in the town of Woodfin who do not graduate from high school. I propose adding this language by first gathering reliable and appropriate statistical data in this area. Number six, modify section F entitled environmental resource, goal one under strategies labeled B, the first bullet. It currently reads, quote, develop specific regulations addressing steep slope and ridgetop development and land clearing grading. I propose that that be deleted and replaced with this language. Develop a new steep slope ordinance or adopt or adapt the steep slope ordinance of Buncombe County that would regulate development and building on steep slopes and ridgetops by March 1st, 2022. I also, number seven, I also move that we include the section G entitled housing that was removed from the old plan. Uh, town staff has asked that we consider putting it back. I uh, propose modifying it in two ways. Section G called housing goal one, objectives A, to modify the first bullet this way. It currently reads, quote, help to ensure a balanced and vital community by encouraging a range of housing types in, in price points for residents earning 150% of area median income or less. The next sentence I propose striking, and it reads, home ownership helps create a citizenry that is fully involved and concerned about all aspects of their community. And finally, modify section G housing, goal number one, strategies labeled B, the very last bullet that starts with, that reads, follow the strategies in the economic development and education sections of this plan in order to increase the income of Woodfin's residents and workers. I propose striking that sentence in its entirety. That's my motion. Okay. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, I'm not that you're returning. May I have just a moment to consult with staff regarding that one? Because I have not read this before. <coughs> Yeah, I'm down version of the house that we referred to. 
with the down version of the housing. Okay, just want to clarify that to make sure which one is referring to. Okay. And is that sufficient for this motion? I would ask that you clarify that, that the housing section that you're referring to is the document that was handed out at the last meeting as opposed to directly out of the and, and not staff recommendation. So the full comprehensive plan had several pages up around housing, and then we gave a summary of that, which was the two pages with the strength. And yes. And so that's what he's suggesting that we include the section G entitled housing as part of the comprehensive plan as provided by staff. Yeah, that's right, at, on August 23rd. Okay, um, yes, uh, that is what I intended. <clears throat> that was my intent. I just want to, I want to make sure you get what you want. Okay, thank you. We're going to have discussion, questions? Okay, well, I need to second. Does anyone oh. want to second this motion? I'd like to have a little bit of discussion. Sure. Um, I'm going to make sure I'm before, 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 okay. Before, 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 so just because I want to make sure I'm on the same page because I did attend last month's meeting. Um, but I do have a question for staff. So if we, in all reality, the last 12 years, we've gone, done business based on thinking that this ordinance or this comprehensive plan was in place, that we had approved it, right? So we've made decisions. And do we know, if, are we still liable for statute limitations on those decisions if we don't adopt this plan? In? Like, are there still decisions we've made that could come back and haunt us? Can I address that? Yes, please. Like. You probably need my favorite there. Um, in terms of the, excuse me, my phone is okay. Again, I'm Sam Craig. Um, the, I'm an attorney. The town has uh, asked me to represent y'all, and I'm also representing the town on other matters related to all this. The, um, I believe your question was, is the town or uh, liable uh, on some past decisions uh, re related to that and the answer is no not because for a variety of reasons but including as you mentioned the statute of limitations there is one one matter that is I, I think as I understand it, I believe there's one matter that is within the statute of limitations that could be addressed although uh, I believe in large part this is going to take care of uh, this and some other things may very well take care of that that situation, but the, as far as anything from 2009 forward until uh, about, really about three years ago, there's, uh, there's no liability in that reluctance. And then if we didn't vote to move this forward for a vote to the, could we move forward doing business without a comprehensive plan in place? That is a really complicated legal question. <laughs> And, and I, I know I did a poor job of, of discussing it with the, the group at the August 23rd meeting, but it, part of the reason is, is it's a really complicated question. 160D has some language in there that, that kind of says that you can't operate without a plan, but then it also has in the, in the legislative background, it has, well, you've got, but if you don't have one, you've got until uh, July of 2022. Those are in conflict, if you read them uh, correct, you know, they're, they're in conflict. And I have discussed this more than once with the School of Government, and the first response I've got, I got was, oh, we didn't think about that, hmm. which is not real comforting. Yeah. Um, but that's why I can't give a real clear answer to you as well. But those, those are in conflict. And because of that, I'm, I'm recommending in this, this situation and in others, a very conservative approach, which is get a plan in place. There, it could be 160 days, 160 D as written could be read to say that you cannot exert zoning authority if you don't have a plan. Now, which doesn't make sense since they also say you've got till January 22, but then again, in discussions with the school of government, they were saying, well, well, that doesn't make sense. And I said, I know it doesn't make sense, but that's what it says. So in answer to your question, from a, there's just language that conflicts within the within 160d and because of that 
that's why I have expressed some urgency for this decision to take that off, out of the, off the table, kind of. My final question is, I just want to make sure I understand. Uh, we keep using the word new a lot, like this new comprehensive plan. But if I take what I understand is what's happened, we thought this adoption would, had taken place over a decade ago, and that there's not really anything new in here other than some housing updates that we brought last month. So, you know, like I, I get the impression from Adrian that we are working on a comprehensive plan, that we're committed to that. Legally, we have to move forward with that anyways, that we all realize that this is an outdated plan. But in all efforts, whether it's 2008 or 2021, we're still talking about a plan that is the same language and was in place for the last decade, right? Yes. Substantially yes. Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> yeah, we, we, yeah. we use the word yes. new. And while it seems new to this board, reality is we've made plans, even if this is outdated, and we know it's outdated. I'm raising six biracial children in this town. I grew up in this town. Like I know Woodfin 20 years ago. I know Woodfin now, and I know what I want for Woodfin in my children's future. But this isn't necessarily new as much as it is that's outdated, and we already have a plan in place to work on a new ordinance for 2022, that's or a new accurate. comprehensive plan. That's okay. accurate. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Good. Any, any other discussion? If I could say one thing that, that might help you, uh, this is a bridge plan, and I've, I've become convinced by Mr. Craig and the town staff that we do need to have the commissioners adopt this plan to, to bridge it so that Adrian and the staff have as much time as they need to get a dynamite plan and get a lot of public input on it. But I wanted to, to throw down the gauntlet to the Board of Commissioners, as well as to the consultants and the staff, that let's make very plain that it does require a new plan. And it, we need to face the reality of a steep slope ordinance. We've yeah. got to face some things that are, that are happening to us. It will, if we get specific about it, and these were the best I could come up with, guys. And if y'all have other suggestions, we can, we can do that. But I think this will show the commissioners that we're serious and we want to see some change and we want to see some dynamic improvements. So that's that's why I wrote what I did here. I hope yeah. that hope that Can helps. Can we add um, a commitment? Like if we make a motion to move this forward for commissioners to vote, can we move it with the intent that we would like the commitment by August of 2022 or July of 2022? Or, I mean, not that they have to do it, but like we could make it our board's intent that we would like the with them to have a new comprehensive plan in place by so I think what you're describing would be a subsequent motion to this one yes. Yes. that you all would put vote on. So I think that's within your right to do so. And Mr. Craig will correct me if I'm wrong. I think the, the risk is if you put a limitation of August 22nd, and it takes a major said 15 months instead of 12 months because you want to go back. We didn't reach this community. We weren't able to, to, to connect with this um, local home park. Then that would be, um, that's the only risk that I would see to that. But that's just more advisory, not right the end of 2022 like or 12 to 24 months maybe a 12 to 24 month period i'm yeah. just saying like i think i want the commissioners to know it's important to us that, that if, even if we identify this as a temporary plan that that's what it indeed needs to be is a temporary mm -hmm. plan and not why a temporary plan for why don't you do we begin a plan by october 2021 okay okay jim you'll have to add that to your motion okay or, or, or a subsequent motion perhaps so, so I had to reread his motion if I just Well, said where would it go? <laughs> well, you'd have to say where it goes, what section, I what. I would proceed, proceed with the motion on the floor, which right. still does not have a second. Right. Then, how's right. that somewhat different? And by another person, that that be a separate motion yeah. okay. for the board to consider. Okay. I second his motion. This keeps it clean. Okay. So you're seconding second his motion, motion, and we're going to vote on what Jim just read to us. Yes. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Everyone's in favor. Wow. Wonderful. And I'd like to make a subsequent motion, please, Good. that we be, make the commitment to begin the new comprehensive plan October of 20, what did you say, 2021 recommendation? Yep. Where would it go? How so is that what, technicality? What Adrian is, is discussing is so you can now have amended the plan as, mm -hmm. as presented to you as recommended by staff. So you've amended that. Now there needs to be another motion and the chairman will walk us through that. And the motion would be to recommend the amended plan to the Board of Commissioners 
And then you may want to add your caveat to that. That begins no later than. And the okay. Begins no later than. Okay. Does that work? Can I suggest that? What, what you really want to do is send a message. That it's this temporary. board wants to send a message, or potentially would want to send a message to the commissioners. I can tell you they've already gotten that from one person already. But the thought, uh, I, I think you could address the, um, what you're wanting to do is kind of a, almost a resolution kind of thing, or just a message. I don't know that it amends the plan um, that, that what you're talking, as I understood, would not really be an amendment to the plan. Um, and I'm not sure that, that the recommendation uh, would, it's just a recommendation. It's kind of as amended or, or that sort of thing. But this board could, as an, in your new business, if you said any other new business at that time, this, this board member could ask that the board consider other new business to include a resolution to the commissioners that okay. the uh, commissioners, that, that this board strongly urges the commissioners to have a, a new right. Which has nothing updated to do plan in yeah. place, whatever. Okay. Uh, you know, but th I think it would be handled better as new other new business <coughs> separate from the plan itself. Okay. So, we have a motion, a second. We all voted on the addition. Yes, the amendments. Jim did. Okay. Uh, so, the motion to amend the comprehensive plan carried. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. Is there another motion regarding the 2021 comprehensive plan before we move uh, to a recommendation to the board of government the board of uh, commissioners yes ma'am yes i move that the planning and zoning board of adjustment exercising its powers as the planning board for the town of woodfin prepare and submit a written recommendation to the board of commissioners regarding the document entitled town of woodfin comprehensive plan 2021 stating as follows one that this board has reviewed and considered the 2021 plan and that the board held a public hearing to allow public input regarding the 2021 plan and that the plan, that the board received input from the town of Woodfin staff regarding the 2021 plan and that the board has reviewed the 2021 plan in context with other plans adopted by the town and find the 2021 plan generally consistent with those other plans. And finally, that based on its consideration and review of the 2021 plan, the Planning Zoning Board of Adjustment recommends that the commissioners adopt the 2021 plan with the amendments approved tonight. Okay. So where are we now? Oh, for this motion. Okay. Uh, and second? Okay. We'll vote on it. Any discussion? No? Sounds good? Okay. Then let's move up. All in favor? Okay, it's passed. Okay. And now I can be ready for your new business. Okay. Uh, I thought I already read this. I'm going to read it again? Okay. As chair, yes, is that what I'm reading? Yeah. Mm -hmm. As chair, I call for a special meeting of the Planning and Zoning Board of Adjustment on Monday, September 27th at 6.30 p.m. at the Woodfin Town Hall for the purpose of a quasi-judicial hearing for a special use permit application for Haley Hirsch Orion Retreat and Daycare Incorporated. And so, Mr. Craig, for that one, there is no motion or vote needed. Is that is that That's just a, the, the, and the chair of the ordinance is the chair calls special meeting. Okay. That's just an informational statement as a new business. Now I think the next thing is you have other new business that you have an amendment. Oh. oh and I guess it's an amendment to the agenda or is it simply just an amendment? Well, I think you can just say business. other new business and that would fall within other new business. Okay. Is so, there any other new business? Yeah, and I'm not sure I know the wording. <laughs> okay. I think we're all still struggling. Um, so I guess my proposal would be to that we make a, a, a 
The resolution. The resolution to urge the commissioners to start the implementation process of the um, process. consultant, I guess, maybe? Because you said you're meeting with the consultant at the end of the month. Begin the process. The Begin the process. 2022 process. In, in October. Yes. yes. Do I need to say that again in a much bigger way? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I uh, make a resolution that we urge the commissioners to make a commitment to guarantee the, uh, I'm about to say common class study, no, sorry, <laughs> consultants for a comprehensive plan for October of 2021. Start the process for the call. Start the process in tw October 2021. So what you're, what you're really doing is making a motion that this Board adopt a resolution that says that. Is that yes, sir. That, that's what you said. That's okay. exactly what I said. <laughs> okay. okay. So that motion would be a second. Okay. Do we have a second for that motion? I'll second that one as well. Okay. And let's vote on it, right? All in favor? Okay. We want them to get their, Good. you know what, in gear. <laughs> okay. I would like to make one more motion. I'm sorry. Oh. Okay. Um, just as we move forward with that, um, I do think that what I did hear tonight was um, everybody is concerned and everybody wants to be informed, and I, I feel that too as a citizen and, and a member of this board. Um, and so when we do look at that um, comprehensive plan and working with that consultant, I would like for us, and this may not be a resolution, this may just be something on the floor, but I would like commitment from the town of Woodfin, from this board, from our commissioners, to look through the equity lens to make sure we're not just putting information on our website, that we are putting it in people's mailboxes, that we maybe are going door to door that we really look at making sure that we get public engagement on different spectrums and not just via our website. I think that's going to be important for our citizens moving forward in the new conference. So, Mr. Craig, does that require a motion or is that simply just entered into the minutes? I think that's just in the minutes mm -hmm. and, okay. and can be expressed and can be staff to the commissioners at the appropriate time. Excellent. Good. Okay. We can speak at their meeting. Good. All right. Yes, we don't have to vote on that. That's correct. Is there anything else anyone would like to say? No? So we'll move to adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? You second? Do. Yes, second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> okay. What if we vote not to adjourn? <laughs> you want to find out? <laughs> next time. Okay, next time. I don't want to find out. Okay.